welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to Seeds of Knowledge, a broadcast outreach of True Knowledge Ministries International in Mannington, West Virginia, USA. In a moment, you will hear the teaching ministry of Pastor Nick Lally. Please prepare yourself with a Bible and pen and paper to take notes. Following the teaching, our address will be given so you can write us with your prayer request. Now, here is Pastor Nick Lally with today's teaching. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And what about Hebrews eleven six? Without faith, it's impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The word diligent means putting a demand on the promises of God. No, it's now it's Uncle Billy 11, 6, Aunt Millie 11, 1. Circumstances, people. Are you listening to me? These are natural carnal thoughts, but they should not overweigh the word of God. But if you hang around with all the miserable people that are probably your best friends and you don't have more word in you, you'll believe, you know, begin to li- uh, listen to that. I was talking to someone that was some time back and going through some issues and, and, uh, and I says, well, you know, I had to go to this hospital here and blah, blah, blah. You know what they told me? They're still paying off their hospital bills. They start telling me about their hospital bills. I says to myself, well, this is really a nice friend of mine. Praise the Lord. You see the natural man? Don't even have enough sense to not. Why are they going to tell me about hospital bills? carnality of man, stupidity of man. If you came to me and tell me, you know, just because of me, oh, past I've been going and I have to get uh, uh, my hernia done and I have no, no coverage and, you know, they're going to put me in a hospital, how should I edify Justin? Hey, Justin, you know, I'm still paying off my hospital bills from 10 years ago. What a nice guy I am to Justin. <laughs> Aren't I building his faith up? carnality of people you know but see because i'm full of the word those things bounce off me and i don't get mad at anybody and i say well they just don't know any better god help me not to be like that okay you know because soon as you tell someone about an ailment they'll tell you about five people they know who died from the ailment you know what was that helping your faith no you see what i'm saying okay these are the enemies that come after us. But if we have the word, the revelation of the word in us, where it's been conceived and birthed, we actually believe. We foresee ahead of time, like God, we believe. <clears throat> for Abraham, human reason for hope being gone, hoped that he should become the father of many nations as he had been promised, so numberless, so shall your descendants be. You hear what it said? Abraham's human reasoning for hope having been gone. How are you going to have human hope with people around us that talk about all the bad sides of everything? Okay? You know, and then if you don't believe those things, they say that you're in denial. I do funeral services, and the ones who don't fall into the coffin with the dead, even though the dead went to be with Jesus, the ones who don't fall into the coffin and cry and flip out, they tell them you need to see a a psychiatrist because you have problems. There's no reaction in you. There's no reaction. You got the word of God. They didn't disappear into air. They're in heaven because that's what I believe. Are Are you listening to me? You know, when I did my sister's uh, uh, gra- graveside uh, service uh, when she went to be with the Lord, uh, I, I, had a t- I talked to about four pastors from Morgantown, ministers from Morgantown, and my Lord, it was like they didn't, even, they didn't even know where they were going. I mean, I know they were saved and everything, but they were devastated. You know, I, this is the promise. This is our hope. This is our hope. So why are you saying that? Until you face a situation, you don't really know what you believe. Okay? Are you you listening to me? Of course someone could be missed naturally. Okay? You know, this is why we want to hold people that are suffering in pain. We want to hold them without prayers on planet Earth. 
you know. Meanwhile, they're, they're 92 years old. They want to go with to be with the Lord. Oh, no, we're believing for you to be healed. And they don't want to stay here. They're 92 years old. Are you, are you listening to me? Okay. Smith Wigglesworth did that, you know. Try to get his wife back. It's in the books. <clears throat> okay, here we go. So he did not weaken in faith, uh, faith verse uh, 19. He considered the impotence of his own body, which is good as dead because he was about 100 years old, that when he considered the bareness of Sarah's deadness of her womb, no unbelief or distrust, verse 20, made him waver, doubting and questioning concerning the promise of God. So he took into effect his own physical condition, her own physical condition, but he waited against the promise of God. Are you listening to me? He didn't weigh it against all the people telling him stuff. He took his facts. I said, you take your facts, and then you weigh it up against the promise of God. So he... he uh, <clears throat> No unbelief or distrust was made him wavering, questioning concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and was empowered by faith. He gave praise and glory to God. Verse 21, fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he has promised. See, that's the issue. How do we see God? Is he powerful enough to keep his word? Or should we burn this book? It's the truth. John 17, 17. Sanctify them, Father, in thy truth. Thy word is the truth. Just because we don't work it, we shouldn't say it's not true. So it said here, fully satisfied and assured that God was able to mighty, and mightily to keep his word and to do what he had promised, that is why faith was credited to him as righteousness, right standing with God. But the words it is credited to him were written not for his sake only, but were written for our sake too, T-O-O. This is written for you and for me, for you and for me, for you and for me. It's written for us. That's why it's written in the book, to show you. Are you listening? Think about this, how powerful our words are. We know it. Proverbs says, that there's death in life in the power of our tongue, and we'll eat the fruit of it. So in other words, you just confess all your bad stuff, and you'll never feel any better, and I'm never going to get a job, and I'm going to lose my house, and I'll just have enough and no more just because my family was like that. That's what you'll have all your life because you eat the fruit of your words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The more we complain, the more we get. Okay? Are you listening to me? But you start talking positive whether you know Jesus or not, and you're going to see positive happen in your life. Think about this. God changed Abram's name to Abraham. And the scholars say, the theologians say, that within, uh, within 9 to 11 months, that Sarah became pregnant. After they changed their name. And Sarai was changed to Sarah. So God changed Abram's name to Abraham, which means, Abraham means in Hebrew, father of many nations. Sarai's name was changed to Sarah, which means mother of many nations. Are you listening to me? Any way you want to look at that, nations, uh, uh, cultures, that's what it means. So God changed the name. So every time Sarah said, Abraham, she was saying, father of many nations. And when he said, Sarah, mother of many nations, they were speaking their destiny. So don't tell me your words don't matter. You know? I'm just never going to get over this. You bum. Let's just get divorced. Your words matter. Speak curses over yourself. <clears throat> I told you over the years, uh, sometimes I would say something out of being stressed out or tired, whatever the excuse might be that my flesh was ruling. And my wife would say, <clears throat> Did you hear what you just said? Would you like the fruit of that? I said, I curse those words in Jesus' name. See, but most of you will get mad at your mate. You try to find, well, what about you? That's what you'll do. Because that's what the flesh does. You know? 
You know, what about you? Look what you watch on TV. We'll come back with something on it. Instead of realizing that there's, there's power in that agreement, there's power in that relationship, instead of trying to stab the other one. How dare you tell me? Look at you, you hypocrite. Well, I'm giving you something to think about. <laughs> Probably for people in TV land, I know. Church, amen. It's all of us, including this pastor up here. When you get in the flesh, you talk negative. You know, some of the greatest, wealthiest men, I say in the world, not just United States, and Adrian most likely knows this. You read it in many books. Some of them never make a decision after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They don't make any important decisions because they know already they've used the amount of time and they may not make the right decision. <clears throat> you know, are you listening to me? Oh, you got to buy this now. If you don't buy it now, it'll be gone tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Where you say, well, you know what? Go sell it to somebody else. You know, are you listening to me? All right. <clears throat> well, praise the Lord. <clears throat> but the words was credited to him and were written down for his sake, but they were written also for our sake too. Righteous standing, acceptable, acceptable to God, will be granted and credited to us who believe, trust in, adhere to, and rely on God who raised Jesus from the dead. You know, you have to understand that. And uh, I believe it's Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, for it is the power, the dunamis, the miracle work and power of God unto salvation, sadzo, healing, deliverance, perseverance, protection, to all those who believe, 4,100 is the number to look up if you want to look in a dictionary degree. 4,100, those who believe have a total trust and a confident surrender. That's what the word believes. Not like me and you. Oh, what's it going to be? 80 degrees today. I believe you. No, it's not that kind of belief. It's a total trust and a confident surrender in the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who's taken you from hell to heaven. A total trust and a confident surrender. So, you know, the trust is not as hard as the, uh, the surrender. Okay? The surrender is the harder part. Because we think God wants to take something from us. Are you, are you listening to me? Even in human people, you know, boy, they're being so nice to me, I wonder what they want. Because that's how humans work. Are you listening to me? So, see, what we deal with in, on, on this way here... We apply it to God, okay? Like he, he wants to take something from us. He gives us life and he takes away death. Are you listening to me? These are natural thoughts, and if you understand them, you won't. So in other words, if you're sitting here and I say something to you and you hear all those voices negative in your head, that doesn't mean that you don't believe. When you take those thoughts and let them come out, your mouth is when you're causing trouble, okay? Are you listening to me? Sometimes, man, I just have such oh, rotten thoughts going through my head, and inside I'll just say, Lord, I don't believe that, and I don't receive that. See, the biggest trap of religious teachers that have ever taught in the body of Christ make you think that if you have a bad thought, that you're, you're, you're wicked, you're a sinner, okay? And what do they use for the Scripture? When you look upon a woman, okay, you have committed adultery. Okay. So what does that really mean? Well, if you looked upon a woman or a man like you would like to have sex with them in bed, and then you took those thoughts and ran with them, that's what it's talking about. But what if you're walking down the street, and well, if you're a woman, and you see this nice, handsome man, and he talks to you, and you get all flustered, you know? Uh, uh, did you just commit adultery? Or did you say, you know what? How you doing? My husband's name is, is John. Would you like to meet him? Are you, are you listening to me? Okay. See how they could, you have no control over those fiery dots that are in the book of Ephesians that come at you. You have control whether you do something wrong or not. Just reject them. That don't make you wicked. That don't, I'm not wicked. I'm not evil. But I get evil thoughts put at me. But I don't receive them. Are you listening to me? I don't receive them because I know the word of God. 
But if I thought they were me, you know what the devil would say? You, know, you shouldn't be a preacher. You shouldn't even go to church because those other people are not like you. You go to church and you get evil, evil thoughts in your mind. You should just stay home. You're a hypocrite. And, and you know how many people are not in church because of that? Because they don't know the right teaching? They think there's something wrong with them? Nobody ever taught them? We don't have control over our thoughts. And let me tell you something. The devil can't read your mind. It's in 2 Kings, I believe. He can't read your mind. The only one that knows what's going on inside you is God. How it seems sometimes like the devil knows exactly what you're going to do. You want to know why? I told you before. Because you go. You make faces. We don't even know we make faces. We make faces. Sometimes I say to, to Pastor, he's hiding. <laughs> I say to Pastor Jeff, you know, sometimes I says, you know, you just made a face. You know, you just shook your head. You know, he, he, he gets an outward sign of what's going on in his mind. When Justin was a little guy, Justin used to say to him, Dad, you seem no, so mad when you preach. <laughs> right, Justin? You say, he go, all those faces, they're like, well, we do those things without even knowing it when we're talking to our mates, when we're talking to one another, or someone says something to us, and we don't even realize that we make faces. And that's how sometimes it seems like the enemy, okay, knows. Now, you know, human beings can pick up the other spirit. Sometimes I'm thinking something. My wife and I were just sitting last night, and uh, we're having something to eat, fasting food, <laughs> having something to eat. And I was just had a thought, and you know, it wasn't two seconds later, she says, well, when are you going to do this, this? I was just thinking about it. It is so powerful where well, your human spirits connect, okay? Your human spirits connect. In the world, we call it intuition, okay? The only difference is, is now you have the Holy Spirit in there to govern us, okay? But your human spirits connect. And the longer you're with someone, the more you amazingly, you can't read minds. We don't read minds, you know? It's the spirit you pick up, okay? On the other side of the spear in the secular world, they call this astro projection, you know? When you have a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom from God, they call it astro projection. That's witchcraft. But you can understand the spirits could know each other, okay? You could can, can just pick up things. The more you hang out with God, the more you walk in the spirit of God. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so we read all the way from verse 16 to 24 in the Amplified Bible, okay? Now, I just want you to look back in uh, Romans chapter 3. And verse 20, 22, New American Standard says, Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for those who believe, for there is no distinction. Listen to this in the Amplified Bible. Namely, the righteousness of God which comes by believing with personal trust, confident reliance on Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and it is meant for all who believe there is no distinction. So really, it's us beginning to believe God at what he says he will do. Do you understand that? Okay. And until we get the word, that's the idea of reading the Bible. It's not how many scriptures we could quote. It's not I read the Bible in 365 days. Wonderful. It can't hurt you. Amen? It can't hurt you. I mean, you know, I don't think I've ever done it. You know, I don't think I've ever read the Bible from, I know I never took it on as a mission from Genesis 1 to the end of Revelations. You know, I know a lot of people do it, and I'm not knocking it, but I don't think I ever did it. Because I could, I could take one scripture, it could take me a month to understand it. And to me, I'm enjoying it. Okay? So it's not how much you read. This is not a novel. Okay? It's not how much you read. It's about meditating on the Word of God. The Word of God says it doesn't, you know, it's, it says do not neglect the studying of the Word of God. It doesn't say about reading the Word of God. Study means think about it. Think about it. And you know what happens when your temper is ready to go and you're ready to lose your temper? Scripture might come to you. You know? Are you listening to me? Sometimes if I owe something and I say, eh, I'll, I'll just pay that, you know, the end of the month or something like that. And I'll hear the Scripture. Do not, when you have it in your power to pay someone you owe, do not hold it back. 
She had a proper. She says, all right, Lord, I'll pay it tomorrow. You know, I'm not talking about a credit card company because I'm one of the guys who uses the money for 25 days. I don't pay interest. But I'm going to, and that's allowed to do it, just the way they're allowed to charge you credit fees and interest on your money. I'm allowed to use a credit card and not pay it back until it's due. So I use cards all the time, and I get 5% back. I get miles on airlines, you know, $30,000 worth of charges, 30,000 miles on an airline, you know. Uh, I sent uh, Pastor Pam to Florida one year. Didn't cost nothing, back and forth on that. Uh, never paid a, a dollar interest on there. Never paid a dollar. I'm allowed to do that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about other situations. I wanted to clarify what I said, okay? I'm talking about other situations where I had, say I owed my nephew $200. He lent me 200 bucks. And I, I'll give it to him at the end of the month. I told him I'd give it to him back then. And I had it in my power to give it back already. God says, well, if you have it in your power, pay those who you owe. Are, are you listening to me? Just like you read in the Bible about it's bad to charge interest. Not if you're a banker. That's your business. <laughs> you have to evaluate what God's talking about. Amen? Okay. Go over to uh, 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians in chapter 1. And I'll be there with you in a minute. I want to read the other half of this page. And I read about four pages. Uh, I think it was Dr. John Polis was on the phone with me, and uh, he was praying, and he says, you know, read Faith That Takes in, uh, in Bosworth's, uh, well, he didn't say the name of the guy. He says Christ the Healer. So that night I wrote, I wrote a note. That was uh, Thursday night uh, that I was with him, and I wrote a note when uh, my wife got home to look in the library under, she has everything in alphabetical order, and I couldn't think of the guy's name, you know, so it was under B. So uh, he says, read that. You know, that night I read it, and the next morning I read it, and the next afternoon I read it, and the next evening I read it, and I was full of faith. And I says, isn't this amazing? Because I have preached these, these scriptures for the, I even corrected here because they got a typo. They got the wrong scripture here. I put the right one in. I have, I've been, been preaching and teaching these scriptures for over 15 years. Overfit. But when I read this, there's something on these pages. It's called the anointing, the presence of God. Okay? Something on these pages that this man had a revelation to deliver to the body of Christ. That when I read this, even though I can quote every scripture that's on these two pages, a faith rose up in me. And I said, wow. Just like that. And I haven't stopped reading it since then. Matter of fact, when we woke up, uh, yesterday morning, my wife gets the Amplified right away, and she reads, like, a, a, a lot of stuff to me, uh, different scriptures, what we're going through. And uh, I, I picked this up, and I, I don't know how many I read all the way, you know, all the way to the end of the chapter. Oh, past the end of the chapter. I just picked it up and started reading it and reading it and reading it out loud. And I says, man, isn't this good? Okay. You know, that's the problem with people. I asked some of you, where's the, where's the leather-bound caps you bought? Pastor Jeff was looking at mine last night when he came out. He fed the cows. And I says, come on in and spend some time with me. And we sat down and talked a little bit in the living room. And he picked up my leather-bound confession book on there. On it. He said, man, yours is all worn out. You know? It's used for sure. Yeah, it's used for sure. Uh, I'm not too spiritual to keep reading it. Because I don't read it. I confess it. You know? Are, are you listening to me? Some of you read something once and try, give it to someone who needs it. I sowed that because they needed it. Well, you don't need it anymore? Buy another one and give it to them. You don't need it anymore? What are you, kidding? That's like saying you read the Bible once and give it away. You know? Well, unless you got that religious spirit that thinks you don't need to read anything but your King James with no footnotes. Well, that's pretty good because you don't even understand what it's saying. Amen? Yeah, sure you. As long as it lines up with the word and there is scripture, and there is scripture for everything he says here. All righty. Where are we? First Corinthians chapter 1. Okay, as you're doing that, let me just read this and we'll go to that. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, Jesus commands us to believe 
we have received the things which we pray at the time we pray without waiting to see or feel them uh, or, uh, and on this condition. He promises, ye shall have them. Faith for healing of your body is the same as faith for forgiveness. It is to believe on the authority of God's word that you were forgiven before you felt forgiven. Can you relate to that? You know, when you ask God to forgive you for something, he forgives you, but it doesn't necessarily mean you feel forgive, forgiveness. To believe on the authority of God's word that you were forgiven before you felt forgiven. Nothing else in faith is for faith is the evidence of things not seen. Isn't that true? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. As soon as the blessings we take by faith is manifest, faith for that blessing ends. When you receive it, that's when your faith ends. When the manifestation is here, that's when your faith ends. Never before. I'm already healed, I'm already healed, I'm already healed. When you get the report that you are healed and you have the, the natural confirmation of that, the faith is gone for it. You move on to something else until that very moment. Are you, are you listening to, you know? It's like someone wants me to pray with them. I said, well, what are you believing for? What do you, what, where are you? You know, what, what are you believing? You, you know what I'm saying? You know, where are you? If you come up to me and you have an ailment in the body and, you know, uh, pray for me, I have uh, this report from the doctor. Well, well, what are you believing for? You know, I don't want you to say, in the name of Jesus, you're healed. And, are you, are, you, are, you, are you reading the word? Do you believe? What do you, what do you believe in for? You know, what are you believing for? I want to pray in agreement what you're believing for. I don't want to tell you what I believe because what I believe is not going to affect your life. Okay? And I found out as we grow in the things of God, God wants us to trust him. Are, are you listening to me? That's where the charismatics go off the wall and they don't get anything anymore because they want someone to tap them on the head with some oil and everything is done. Well, I'd like it if it worked that way too, wouldn't you? Okay, but what are you believing for? You know, I'm believing for this. Okay, good, let's pray. Matthew 18, 19. If two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done by their Father who's in heaven. Even though there's a ministry anointing on a minister to pray for you that would even knock you off your feet sometimes, there still has to be an agreement. You know, there still has to be a clarity. Thanks for listening today to Seeds of Knowledge. We would like to hear from you. Write us at TKM PO Box 46, Mannington, West Virginia, 26582. That's TKM PO Box 46, Mannington, spelled M-A-N-N-I-N-G-T-O-N, West Virginia, abbreviated WV 26582. You can email us at TKM at westco.net. Westco is spelled W-E-S-T-C-O. Be sure to visit our website at www.tkmi.org where you can hear this broadcast again or a wide selection of other teachings by Pastor Nick. Until our next broadcast, may God bless you and meet your every need.